Hey YouTube, how's it going? I hope everybody's having a great holiday season. Uh, now with the holiday spirit in mind, I bought myself a brand new camera, which uh, I'm recording with right now. And I'm kind of messing around with the settings and I just really wanted to do a video so I could see uh, the quality of, uh, of the video and the sound. We've decided that we are gonna do a giveaway for Christmas. So um, make sure that you're subscribed now so that you can uh, get a notification about that giveaway. Christmas, we'll announce what the giveaway is, what the rules are, and how to get into it. I'm giving it away uh, around um, New Year's Eve or something like that. So I was thinking about what I could uh, make a video about, and a lot of people have been asking me about my deer hunting season, and I've been thinking a lot about why this season was so successful. And I've thought about a few of the things that I really started focusing on this season that I felt played a big part in my success. And I'm gonna break all of that down for you so that hopefully it can help you guys in the future when you're picking spots to hunt. So I wanted to come up with a really fancy acronym that would help you uh, remember what to focus on in order to test my theory of what it takes to kill bucks on public land in Florida. And what I came up with is best sit. Wait, no, best sit. Bedding, easiness, sign, timing, and then sit is just sit. And this is in no particular order. I just really wanted it to fit into a cool acronym so you can find these things in whatever order you want. So when I go about looking for a place to hunt, I actually, I start with number two. <clears throat> I look for the easy trails to follow. Think about deer, they're lazy, just like humans. I don't wanna walk through some thick briars, through a swamp, over a bunch of like logs and things like that to get to my stand. No, I wanna find the easiest path to walk. So, you know, you find a well-beaten path and you walk down it. There's some advantages to that as well, for us especially. When it's a well-beaten path, you're not rubbing your, your sleeves and your pant legs and everything onto the leaves around you. The only thing that's making contact is your boots because you're not pushing through thick brush. And that means that you're gonna leave a lot less scent behind when you're walking to your stand. Now, deer like to use those kinds of trails as well. And when they're walking those trails, they're basically putting themselves in a position where there's not a lot of scent for them to pick up. And that makes it kind of more dangerous for them. But they'll risk it especially during a time of year when there's not a lot of pressure. So think about like opening weekend and probably the weekend after that. These deer will still be using easy to walk trails because they just don't know that they're being hunted yet. After that, things really start to change and you kind of have to just start scouting again and figure out what trails they're using. And again, we just find trails that are beaten down that they've been using a lot and have lots and lots of tracks. So once I find that, I'll try and find an intersection with another trail, right? So like, cause when you have a crossing, you've got four directions that a deer could come from and just increases your chances of seeing a deer if you were to set up your stand right there. Now, if I can't find a crossing, that's fine. If I have a spot where there's lots and lots of tracks um, and it, it's not a crossing, that's fine. I'll, I'll stick with that. So you've got an area that you know that deer are using a lot. <clears throat> now, I'll start looking for a bedding area. We're looking for a place where deer are gonna feel comfortable. You wanna find a place where they can bed down with heavy cover and you don't want there to be a lot of travel through the bedding area. You don't want people walking through it because when that happens, they're just gonna get the heck out of there. Now, a lot of people wonder, how do you find bedding? Like, how do you know that it's a bedding area? Because a lot of times the beds are not super obvious. Well. It's really simple. The way you find bedding area is you go into really thick areas, preferably where the plants are, you know, about just tall enough to where if a deer put their head down while they're standing, you would not be able to see them. And then if they stuck their head up, they could see right out outside of the bedding area and see what's going on outside of it. Um, those are perfect bedding areas. So think of things like palmettos or uh, tall grasses or, uh, you know, relatively short shrubs. Those are perfect bedding areas. 
If you can find a bedding area that's adjacent to a trail that's heavily used, then that's gold. Because deer, they, they want to know what's going on. They want to be able to see you. So they're not going to be super far away from that trail where you see all those tracks. In fact, they're going to be pretty close by. And they're like, I mean, if you've ever encountered deer, they're like ninjas. It's, it's ridiculous how quietly they can move through the woods. So they'll sit right next to some of those trails that you've been walking in on and you never even thought about hunting, you know, 50 yards off of that trail. They're sitting right there. And when you come walking by, they can smell you and they can hear you and they'll just pop their head out and kind of watch as you walk right by. And as long as you keep walking, they won't care. They won't move. But if you stop and you maybe start moving close to them, that's when they're going to get the heck out of there. I mean, how many times have you been standing in the woods and you're walking around and you're looking at sign and you stop and you're talking to your buddy? You know, what, what should we do? Where should we go? What should we do? And you're standing there for like 30, 45 seconds, a minute, two minutes, three minutes, whatever. And all of a sudden... You just hear a deer crashing through the woods and then you realize that that deer's been sitting right next to you in the bushes waiting for you to leave. But then when you didn't leave, it got nervous, it picked up and ran away. Those are those bedding areas. Now, if it's that kind of situation and the deer absolutely figured out what you were and got the heck out of there, then I probably wouldn't hunt that spot. But if that deer had no clue what was going on and it, you bumped it out of there without it really knowing, then chances are it's going to come right back because it's been going to that bedding area over and over and over again and it hasn't died yet. So it feels really safe there. So those are some things to consider when you're looking at bedding areas. So we've got our, our easy trails, lots of tracks. We found a bedding area really close by that kind of overlooks those trails. Now let's think about the sign that's there. Are they actually using that bedding area and those trails right now? We need to think about how old the sign is. You want to find sign that's like two weeks old. If you can find a spot where deer are coming through on the regular over like a two week period or even better, uh, you know, every day or every other day in the last two weeks, that's the kind of spot that you want to hunt. If you're finding sign that's old, it's no good. You know, a lot of people tend to focus on consistency. Like they'll put out game cameras and they'll be like, oh, this buck uses this area like over, you know, it's used it 10 times in the last couple months. And it's like, great. That doesn't mean a whole lot. I mean, it means that he's in the area, but, but you're not finding the trail that he is using at that moment in time. And deer tend to be creatures of habit. If they've been walking one trail for the past week and they haven't been killed yet, that's a safe trail. Think about uh, things like if the tracks are in the mud, right? If they're in, in like some nasty mud. If there's a lot of cover above it, the rain isn't going to distort the sediment there. And so those tracks are going to stay put for a really long time, like months at a time. So it might look like there's a lot of deer moving back and forth in an area, but really it's just a few deer that have used that spot quite a few times over the past few months. Uh, when you find a rub, if it's like oozing sap or it's still moist to the touch, chances are that's a really fresh rub. And that means that a deer's been hitting it pretty recently. That's a good sign that you should set up near there. If you're dealing with a scrape, think about leaves. How much are the leaves falling right now? If it's early season in Florida or South Florida especially, there's no leaves falling. There should be no leaves in that scrape. If there's like dimples from the raindrops, think about when the last time was that it rained. You know, these are all things that you can use to figure out how old that sign is. Now, if that sign is really fresh, like within the last two weeks, you've got your good trails, you've got your bedding areas, then you're in a really great spot. And the last thing you need to do is sit and I mean sit and stay put. The more time you spend in your tree stand there, the better. Now, I won't hunt the same spot more than two weekends in a row. And my theory is basically that once you sit there, your, your scent is blowing all around there, right? And, 
And even when you're not there, the deer are going to come through there and they're going to smell that. Now, the first weekend they come through, like after the first weekend, they'll come through and they'll smell you and they'll go, huh, a human's been here. Whatever. There's humans out here sometimes. Big deal. It won't care so much. But by the second weekend, they come through and they smell you again. They're like, all right, this guy is coming here regularly. I need to avoid this area. Now, when you think about the fact that you can only use a spot for a short window of time, I like to maximize the amount of time that I spend in that spot. I really don't want to give them an opportunity to move past my stand during the time that I have available to hunt. And that means that I'm basically hunting all day long. Like I'll do all day sits, especially at the beginning of the season. As the season progresses, or I'll start to spend a little less time in my stand, but uh, you know, the shortest that I'll sit is basically until like 10, 1030. Keep in mind that first buck, I shot him at 1045. You know, a lot of people get out of their tree stands at like 930. Uh, and when you do that, you're missing a lot of the action. I mean, especially in the beginning of the season, these deer, they're not, they're not on that nocturnal pattern yet. And so being there in the middle of the day really pays off in a lot of situations. You know, the more time that you spend in your tree stand, the higher the chances are that a buck's going to walk by when you're actually in your tree stand. So these are the five things that I find most important in, in trying to kill bucks on public land in Florida. Now, there's obviously a lot of other factors that play into this, but these are things that people have talked about a lot in the past. You know, one of those is your scent uh, and wind direction. You know, people talk a lot about this stuff. Um, and that's definitely something that I take into account, but not so much in picking the spot that I'm going to hunt. I take that more into account picking the position that I'm going to set up my stand. Because most of the time I'm using a climber. Soon I'm hoping to transition to hunting out of a tree saddle. Um, you know, both of these are really mobile platforms that allow you to set up in different ways depending on the situation. What I like to do, and this is sort of um, opposite to what a lot of people like to do. A lot of people like to set up their tree stands so that your best shot opportunity is facing into the wind so that you can see a deer coming from a long ways away and you can get ready and get the best shot. Personally, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me because what you're doing is you're putting your worst shot opportunity, like your, your bad side, with is downwind. So if a deer walks up from that direction, you're screwed because then you got to stand up, you got to slowly turn around and take a shot in that direction. Meanwhile, the deer's already caught your scent and he's long gone. You know, so what I like to do is actually set up so that I have my best shooting, my quick shooting abilities are downwind. That way, and I, I like to focus on like, okay, there's the trail that I expect them to walk on. You know, if my wind is blowing this way, it's going to intersect that trail right there. Now, if I know that that's the case, chances are when he gets my scent, he's not going to take off right away. He's going to catch it. And he's going to stop. I don't even have to do the, you know, I, I know he's going to catch my scent. If I see a deer coming down that, I'm going to get ready to shoot right there where he's going to catch my scent. And I know that as soon as he catches, he's going to stop and I'm going to have a perfect shot opportunity. You know, that is exactly what happened with um, <clears throat> that eight point that I shot in, in zone C. Um, I was set up, face, you know, with my left side was facing... Uh, downwind, the wind was coming across like this, and when he came running down that trail, I just picked up my bow, and by the time I was pointing at him, he was already stopped, because he got to downwind of me, and he was sniffing the air, and he was looking around and looking for me, but because he was standing still, I just picked up my bow and took the shot as quickly as I could. I would not have been able to do that if he was on my bad side. I, I would have had to waste way too much time standing up, turning around, and taking aim. So I always face so that the wind is blowing like in front of me so that if a deer were to come from that direction, I can make a really quick shot. Then the other side where the wind is blowing at me, it doesn't matter because they, you know, I'm going to see them from like miles away or wherever. And I'm going to have plenty of time to slowly turn around and take that shot 
uh, because they're not going to have a clue that I'm there. Uh, I'll be completely honest. In the beginning, the first couple deer that I killed, I wasn't thinking about this. I was thinking about, oh, there's lots of tracks here. This is a great spot. I'm just going to set up on these tracks. But in hindsight, when I started really thinking about the, the areas where I killed these deer, and I think this is a good thing to do, to think about the area where you shot a deer after you shoot the deer, because that's when you can get down and really scout it out, figure out what the heck is going on in that area. You know, um, and, and I realized on a lot of these deer, I'd get down and go look around and I'd find a whole bunch of rubs and scrapes and beds that I had no clue were there. I was just focused on really good tracks, you know, like a good trail that they were using. And that actually brings up a really good point too. When you find really good sign, like let's say you go into an area and you're like, oh, here's some really good tracks. It's super fresh. Like, I know the deer are using this. Maybe it doesn't matter if, if there's bedding there or not. You know, you find really, really fresh sign. Screw it. Don't go look for anything else. You're just going to spread your scent around. You find that fresh sign, set up your stand, don't go any further in. And that way you're not messing up the whole area. But... You know, when you're scouting at the end of this season, getting ready for next season, or you're scouting in the off season, those are times that you can really pick apart an area and find some of these things that I'm talking about. Um, but in any case, the the first few deer that I shot, I wasn't thinking about you know these five as or these four aspects of of the sign. Um, but in hindsight, I realized that in all cases, I had uh, this kind of a setup. So after that, I was like, I need to see if this is legit. And so on my last buck, that big eight point, I went out and specifically picked a spot that had these characteristics. I was sitting, you know, uh, on a well-beaten trail. It was like a buggy trail. Um, right next to the trail, there was like some thick ferns and and palmettos and it, I knew there was beds there I had seen them already there was rubs so there was lots of fresh sign um and I said you know what this is gonna be a great spot to set up I didn't have any trail cam pictures or anything I just had a feeling that that was being used a lot that it was fresh it had easy access uh and I set up there and I was in the tree stand for like 45 minutes before that buck stepped out and so now I'm a true believer in, in this system and I'm really looking forward to trying to use this next season to see if, you know, if I'm onto something here. But a lot of you are still hunting. A lot of you guys still have uh, some deer season left. So if you're still hunting and you're struggling to get a buck down, give this a try. Look for these, uh, these four features and spend some time in a tree stand. And, you know, if you, if you have success like I did, please comment and let us know. We'd love to hear, uh, you know, whether this works out for you as well. All right, guys, I'm going to stop talking. I've been going for a while and it's a work day. It's getting to be about that time that I got to go get some work done. Uh, if you like this shirt that I'm wearing, this is our uh, Swamp and Stomp High Pine shirt. They're just really comfortable and actually really nice shirts. Got a nice little pocket here for your cell phone. We got hoods on them. So if you're interested in getting a shirt like this, uh, go to our eShop. It's swampandstomp.ecrater.com. Uh, the link is down in the description. Um, you know, any, any shirts or any merch that you guys buy, that money goes right back into the channel. We really appreciate all the support that we've been getting. Uh, if you don't follow us on Instagram yet, make sure that you go do that now. And as I mentioned before, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, do it now and click the little bell so you get notifications. And one of those notifications will be our giveaway for, uh, for Christmas. So make sure you're looking out for that. And uh, in the meantime, stay safe, be diligent, and good luck in the woods, guys.